Okay, we've got all our edges paired up except for the last two. We're down to the last two edge pairs or last two edges. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to call these edge pairs and the individual edges wings. There's only two possible scenarios when you're down to your last two edges. The first of which is where if you split the centers, these two match up. And if you split the center the other way, these two match up. The problem we face, though, is there's no empty slot to put these into because every other edge pair is matched up. So, for example, if we put it up here in the top, move it over, as soon as we bring something down, it's an edge pair. And when we fix the centers, we split it up. So that's no good. Now we're going to look at the other scenario by flipping this edge pair. By now you should know how to flip edge pairs, but if not, I'll go over it thoroughly at the end. So now once I flip this edge pair, it actually looks worse because these two wings are in the same layer with each other. And when I move this orange green over, it just kicks that orange green out of the way. Same thing down here at the bottom. If I move that orange blue over, it just kicks that one out of the way. So it seems like a bit of a paradox, an unsolvable scenario, but let's do a little bit of a thought experiment. If I split this center right here, what do you think would happen if I flip this edge pair? And then I bring this back. So right now I've got green, orange, they're going to flip and come down to the bottom. What do you think will happen when I bring this back? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to flip this with beginner method. And I think you already know what's going to happen. I do. They match, which also solves that one. So let's look at that again. That's a pretty simple concept. So all we're doing is we actually want them in the plane with each other. And it doesn't matter if I flip over here, I could flip here, or I could do the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but let's just look at that top again. So once I flip this, these two will trade, which is gonna put this one up here, which will move it over here, which is what I want. This one will go down here to pair with this one, which is what I want. So real simple concept. So I just flip that edge pair with this beginner method of flip. And as soon as I bring them back, those pair and these pair. Okay, so let's look at that again. Um, and like I said, it doesn't matter if I, I can twist this one. But just for example, I'll come here. Then when these flip, they solve, they solve. So it's a real simple concept that if you just play with a little bit, it's pretty easy to understand. And we're gonna use that same concept to solve more complex things like parodies with no algorithms. Okay, so what happens, let's go back to that other state where, let's go back to here, where they're matched up here, they're matched up here. What happens if I flip these? Is that gonna do anything productive? Well, let's think it through. These are just gonna flip but they're still gonna split apart. So that doesn't do us any good. So if we flip them again, they're in the same plane and it doesn't matter how I solve them. I just have to, I just have to split them. So I can split them this way, split them this way, it doesn't matter. And now they're solved. And that's how easy the last two edges are. There's also other methods to flip. That's flipping it without a axis rotation. And then we can also flip it like this. And then they're solved. But this is the reason, when we talked about beginner flipping in another video of just turning the side, but it rotates your center, this is the reason we can't just do that because now my centers are messed up. These two, that is. So when doing this, you really don't want to memorize any algorithms. You want to make sure you understand it because that's going to make solving bigger puzzles a lot easier. And then plus when we get into solving parodies in, intuitively, this understanding is going to allow us to solve a lot of things. 
All right, so we're gonna do um, a few last two edges examples on this demo cube, but I'm gonna show you a few little tricks. So instead of just splitting, so instead of just splitting the cube like this, we're only gonna split a slice, okay? So again, I'm just gonna split this slice, flip that edge pair, and then return this slice. So it solved the last two, but watch what happens when I resolve the top here. I'm gonna flip this pair. We end up with a parity. So four by four parity. With everything we've learned already, we're actually gonna solve this parity. And I'm gonna do a video on how to solve this parity intuitively with no algorithms. So let me just return this the way it was. Flip that. Move this back, split, unsplit, and we're back to where we started. So you can do a lot of cool stuff if you understand edge flipping, relative position, and what I call doing and undoing. Doing a sequence or algorithm forward and reverse. I don't necessarily call this an algorithm though, because it's so intuitive but it could be considered an algorithm in forward and reverse. And just one more time, let's do, uh, let's flip that, move this, flip it, bam. Pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna learn parity. We're gonna learn a lot of stuff in some upcoming videos. Uh, we may even go over the mathematics of parity.